Let's bring out this sky one more time with one more wash. Get the bead going again, gently. And instead of water, I add that second blue. I'm tilting. And now I'm going to just add water because I want to get a very nice graded wash going right across. There we go. It's a happening. Okay, more water. And now I'm going to do something. I'm going to take a little bit of the puddle, rub it off, add more water. I'm getting that line there again, see? To make sure I tilt it to get it looking right. So I actually have to tilt that right down. There, I have to go to boss this around a little before it starts to set. It's all wet. Bring it up. See what I'm doing there? Now this works with transparent paint. If you're using grainy paints like ultramarine or any of the earth colors, you're not going to get this effect. You have to wash the paint off every time you do a wash. Uh, so I'm going to get that blue through there. There we go. The English would either take breadcrumbs and rub them all over the painting to take up some of the granulated paint from ultramarine or burnt sienna, yellow ochre, all the earth paints. They uh, have to be washed off in this technique. But we're lucky today we have all these coal tar paints. They're called coal tar derivatives and synthetics like thalocene. And yeah, just gonna let that dry now. Sitting straight. Get my hair dryer. Don't go too close. Keep it from a distance. If you go, if you go too close, you're gonna blow all the wash around. So come from a distance, gently set it right down in. I'm gonna take some of this alizarin crimson and really thinly. Now I'm going to add this. little wash here, very gently. And I'm going to do a little pepper stroke at the end. I'm not going to use any more water, just a little pepper stroke like that, see? Believe it or not, there still is some red left in the brush and I want to just lose it into here. Now this is all wet, so I could add one more now See, I've wet the paper. You can see it's glistening. And now I'm going to be watching carefully as I just pepper the stroke in. You see it's a little drier here. The stroke's showing up. So I can gently, gently stroke it. And even over the white here, that'll look like it's in the shadow. And what I'm doing is creating a bit of a shadow on the mountain because I've added this violet color to it. Now you'll notice that this is starting to show up more. That's, that's something I don't want to lose. I don't want to touch that. Now I'm going to take it from the other end. If I tilt it this way, it's all going to drip down here, which is one of the things we want. We want it to drip. We don't want puddles of paint sitting on the paper. A watercolor looks great when it's wet. The test of your technique is when it has dried. So just because it looks all nice and shiny with a puddle of paint, it's not going to look like that when it's dry. And I'm going to be taking a little bit of the Azo Yellow, just a little bit on my brush. I'm going to load it, shape it, Touch it to the rag so it doesn't drip. And I'm going to do that little tap stroke. If you do it gently, you won't disturb the layer of paint underneath. If you do it with too much, if you hammer too hard, you are going to disturb the paint underneath and it's going to get mushy looking and dirty. 
Once again, if this was ultramarine underneath and it wasn't well washed off, this would all be turning into mud. So we, we will be using those colors in the next session, but right now we're just being very careful. Let me take a look at that now. It's, it's affected a difference. Now, I think what we'll do next is we're going to put in something called a flat, wet wash. What I do is very carefully, I wet my 140 pound paper. It doesn't have to be everywhere, but I can see by holding it on an angle where the paper is wet. That's why uh, today I have my halogen lights on. They're not shining directly. I shine them straight up at the ceiling. So I get a lot of light bouncing around in my room because it's winter and it's about four o'clock in the afternoon and there is no light of any worth left. So you may have to work at night. So if you're going to work at night, get some halogen lights. Don't work under fluorescence or incandescence. Use halogen. They're the best. Okay, that's all wet. I'm going to let it sit for a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a drop, a lizarin, and I'm going to drop it in. I'm just going to give it a minute more. Just waiting. Think more. Paint less. I'm going to do a little dispersion test. I'm just going to touch it. Oh yeah, it's working. That's good enough. And now I take a little more water. Remember, this blobbing or this pooling of water is only good if you know what you're doing. Don't be afraid. If it tilted, it's only going to go where the paper's wet. So I'm concentrating my attention on this shape and I'm tilting. And I'm not letting it go everywhere. Remember, I want white on the, this side showing. I want to get rid of these little lines here so I have to boss the paint a bit and pick up the drips. Turn it around. Always, always, always when you get a pool of water, tilt and pick up the drips. Remember your best friend is your rag for the English watercolor no drips style of painting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a flat wash with my fine Robert Simons number eight brush. A little bit of yellow there. I'm going to now darken this side of the cloud. I'm going to make sure it's dry. Yes it is. Put a little bit more of the alizarin crimson. And I'm going to take a little bit of it. And I'm going to do a little wash here gently. But I'm going to do an infused wash. Notice I've done the alizarin crimson, then I pop over here for the very, very thin phthalo. And I'm infusing the two of them together and bringing them up on an angle, cleaning off my brush. Soften the edge. Never soften the edge just once, if you can. Get two little spots of water coming down there. And of course, as always, tilt and see if there's any drips to pick up. What I'm going to do is put a shadow on each of the trees. This is where your big brush comes in. Sun's coming on this angle, so, and this seems to be a rounded shape, so I'm just going to wet the bottom of this gently. I'm putting a little bit, dampening it. And now I'm going to take my smaller brush and it's going to use the dark blue. And I'm going to make a little stroke like this. Hold it up right underneath with that nice brush and just stroke it over on each one. Same angle. Now because that's wet, I can add a little more here. Here's the rule for shadows, or not so much a rule, but an observation. 
bring it right up into the tree. The shadow is always darkest at the source, which is here. And the edges are always sharpest at the source. So darkest and sharpest here. Take my brush. Because I wet the paper, I'm going to come in right here and soften the edge. Gently soften the edge. Just exactly at the tip. I'm going to leave that hard edge. I think I'm going to leave it like that for a while let it dry. That's good. And I'm going to warm up this with a nice little yellow wash. Gently. Just kind of wash it over gently. Right in here. Don't touch that. And I can pick up the drip here. Watch the shadow doesn't drip. Notice I'm leaving the shadow paint on. It's not quite a blob, but because I wet the paper, it's sinking into the paper. Okay, now what I've added here is nickel azo yellow. That's this color right here. It almost looks like yellow ochre, but making sure my brush is really clean and Notice I have a good tip on this number eight brush. I'm done with painting. So I'm going to take a little bit of this Azo Yellow. Oh, that's way too much. So I'm going to take some off. Like we're talking just a drop. Look at all that makes. This is a tremendous yellow stainer. Now, notice my brush is fully loaded with it. It still looks kind of rusty. But what, wait till you see what it looks like when it hits the paper. Now I've touched the brush to my rag and I'm going to, on the, just over there, leaving a little bit of white, just going to get a little bit of that yellow on there. There we go. Notice how I've just tapped it in. There's a very fine amount up there, but I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to get a little more yellow here. I'm going to get take a little more yellow. and. I'm going to look around. Is there, there's a little spot here. It's all dry. Add a little bit of yellow. Oh, look at the blob. So I take a thirsty brush, touch the blob, and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm adding little spots of warmth into my tree. Now if I redid this picture, I'd probably leave more spots in here where I can put in a little bit of um, paint. 